What's going on? It's your boy K. Welcome back to another uh, 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 educational, uh, 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 informational, uh, uh, documentary style video. All right, before we get started, make sure you read up on that um, disclaimer. Because right? I do have haters, they like to sabotage. And uh, yeah, let's just get right to it. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Slow your horses, buddy. You clicked on a long video. I advise you to put this on before you go to bed. This is the House of Knowledge at Revolution, uh, Evolution, and uh, I forgot my own intro. But listen, hey, bro, on your way in, okay, it don't cost a dollar, bro. It don't even. I'm not asking you for money. Click that like button. Click that. No, no, don't click. Smash that subscribe button. All right, you got it done? Leave a comment while you at it. Stop being such a... Oh, the... All right, you took care of it? Nice. See, now I like you. Now me and you are cool. We're friends. All right, so welcome to the family. It's your boy, AK. And, and yeah, let's just... Let's jump to it, man. If you haven't, man, click that like button and smash that before I come out the screen and smack you upside down. All right? You think I'm joking? You think I spent all my time here? I'm not even asking for money, dog. Like, what's wrong with people? Oh, let's get to it. Oh, boy. Guys, this one here I've been excited about. Not that I'm not excited about most of the ones I end up doing, but... This topic right here, before I'm, I'm gonna give you a proper intro here. First of all, it does not get the coverage I believe it deserves. Um, if you're in the crypto space, you know, still most likely, just like the other spaces or any space for that matter, most likely you haven't heard of this. But if you're in the crypto space and you're informed about the birth of the first cryptocurrency, aka Bitcoin, or just in case you don't know, the inventor of Bitcoin named Satoshi Nakamoto, still to this very day, no one really knows who he is. In my opinion, there's many theories, but in my opinion, today's character here, today's subject, is one of the people, my personal opinion, could be wrong, but I believe, high chance, it could be him, and I tend to believe it's him, but who, you know, what do I know? A guy named Paul LaRue that spelled LaRue with a R-O-U-X, X is silent. I didn't invent the English language. I didn't make the rules. Don't look at me funny. Paul LaRue. Some call him a kingpin. Some call him a villain. And some call him a supervillain. Damn. Oh, the... Now ask yourself, what separates a shady businessman from a criminal? Okay, now ask yourself again, what separates a criminal from a villain? Now take in this one. What separates a villain from a supervillain? The answer to all three of these questions can be found in today's subject, Paul LaRue. This is a unique story. It's the story of a talented coder. Yes, coder as in software engineer. Someone who writes code. Who would become a modern day kingpin. Yes, a kingpin, like a drug kingpin. But then, 
he will become a real life super villain, like out of a cartoon or something. Our story starts with December 24th, 1972, in what is now Zimbabwe, Africa. He was adopted as a baby. When Robert Mugabe rose to power in 1984 and ended the rule of the white minority of Zimbabwe, Paul's family moved to South Africa. As a young man, he dabbled in both business and crime. <laughs> oh, le. Me and him have a uh, similar start, actually. Uh, uh, uh. So he starts selling P O R N. Shout out to the YouTube team. Please don't demonetize. So he got selling that, you know, movies, all right, adult entertainment, all right. However, aside from this incident, he mostly stayed out of trouble and decided to drop out of school at the age of 16 to become a coder. Self-taught, okay? Dude was smart. Ain't no if, am, but about it. Ain't no doubt he was smart. He had a genuine talent for programming, and it was evident. You know, it became evident when in 1998, you ever heard of a software called E4M? That stands for Encryption for Masses. Guess what? He wrote that. He single-handedly developed E4M, Encryption for Masses. A program that I believe, not sure, it would encrypt your hard drive. Uh, 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 like, let's say, actually, this, this is the example I remember. I could be wrong. You could look up, though. You remember Silk Road? Oh, le. You remember how to, in Silk Road, they wanted to catch him with his laptop open? Because if he would have closed that laptop, boom, self-encrypts. Using what? E4M. Now, keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that. In a world that was still adapting to the internet, Pa saw the need for true privacy. He was far ahead of his time. <laughs> so far ahead that E4M would be used as the base code for another encryption software released in 2004, titled TrueCrypt. You might have heard of that one, maybe not before around. Now, this was the beginning of, 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 of let's say, uh, static with the U.S. government. Because according to documents leaked by Edward uh, Snow, let me take a pause here because I don't want to get demonetized. Then, okay, you know Edward, you know Eddie. Let's call him Eddie. I don't want to catch a, a trigger some on YouTube. You know how they be. So Eddie in 2013, all right, the NSA had not been able to break TrueCrypt. So you know he was on their eyes site. Uh, the, they didn't like him already. It was a start of a, uh, let's just say he became the ops, okay? He became the enemy. Oh, the. Moving on. It isn't known if Pa was directly uh, involved with True Crips development, but he definitely made the foundation for it. His work on E4M was um, a key ingredient, or, or rather, a key, main key, main key to the success of TrueCrypt. See, Pa tried to work on uh, 
work to monetize e4m like many things ahead of their time you know early on but like many things ahead of their time sometimes they don't bear the fruit immediately you know kind of like my rap career 10 years later now it's starting to make some money but it is what it is only now that i'm doing documentaries and stuff they're like come back rapping come back rapping Oh, I've been rapping ten years, bro. Give me, I'm, let me do these docs. We'll talk about that later. So, to make matters worse, the online casino software he was working on, it wasn't gaining much traction. This all would lead Paul to pack up and move to the Philippines in 2004. I'm out of here, he said. I'm gone. So he moved to the Philippines. And he started a new project. A company, rather. You know, he mixed the online computer stuff with some that is, um, let's just say, a trade that never failed to be profitable in the history of, uh, of humanity. A.K.A. Drugs, all right? So he mixed drugs with the online stuff. But he wasn't selling illegal drugs, though. Now, don't let your mind go this far yet. Hold on. He, he launched a pharmaceutical company, and he called it RX, RX Limited. He partnered up with Israeli businessmen to open call centers across the Philippines and Israel where his employees would work. But they wouldn't work on a, on a, on a Filipino tamen or Israeli tamen. They would work during American hours to make sales and provide support. See, this was targeted at the U.S. How did this work? Okay, how did they get drugs online? What are you talking about? All right, peep game. Now, you, you, you was probably thinking of like a Silk Road type of thing, right? No, no, no. He wasn't on the dark web. In fact, this was a service web service. Let me tell you, this is how it would work. So let's say you a customer. All right, so you, you would go on their website. And they hit you with a questionnaire and they'll connect you with a doctor, all right? So you fill up this questionnaire and RX Limited would connect you to a RX Limited doctor online, which then he would proceed to prescribe you the meds right there and then. Like, hey, bro, you want a perky, okay? You trying to get on a Zaz? I don't recommend any of that. But back then, all you had to do was pull up to RX Limited, okay, load that up, and, 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 and look up on the other tab, make a click new tab, <laughs> okay, and look up Zan, uh, you know, symptoms or whatever. So I don't, I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying that was, it wasn't recommended by them, technically. But that's 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 what people were doing, bro. Okay, it just kind of, you know, it was like a little. Remember, like back before they legalized weed in Canada and like places like California where it was legal medically. But if you pull up to the dispensary and told them, "Hey, bro, I can't sleep, bro," and then they had a doctor sitting in 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 the, in the other room. All right, bro, all right, I get it. Come in. Same thing. As a matter of fact, some people uh, blame RX Limited for kind of kickstarting the opiate crisis in the U.S. But let's keep going. So RX Limited was successful, highly successful. I'm talking, it got to a point, Mr. Pa right, and his corporation, er, 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 uh, uh, legal cartel. <laughs> oh, 
he was seeing upwards of 300 mil in four years. God damn. 300 mil. Now that's money. In four years, that's a lot of money. So one can consider uh, 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 Paul uh, a, a, just another shady businessman. A little dubious, okay, the RX Limited operations. But they could have thought what they thought. Shady, dubious, okay, grimy, whatever you want to call it. All right? What's the other word? A crook, a book, whatever you thought, you had to write it in your book called a diary because he didn't care. And it's not like you could put him in jail because his business... RX Limited operations, they fell under a legal gray area. Because it was legal. I mean, the doctor prescribed it. All he did was just make it really too convenient to get drugs. You know? And Pa worked to keep the company under the radar. He didn't want no smoke. He didn't want no trouble. So the cost centers often open in areas where he knew the police, politicians, and, you know, other officials. They could be bribed. All right? You get it? That's how it works in them countries. You know? Inboxes all over the world. They were getting emails from Rx Limited talking about, buy drugs online. Hmm? You telling me I don't got to go to, um, what's his name, Ashton's house every time? And call him and wait four hours where he tell me, hey, bro, I'm on the way. Hey, bro, I'm 10 minutes. I'll be there in 10 minutes. But he show up four hours later? Okay, I'll give it a chance. So he he just facilitated. Made it easy. (sighs) So let me paint you a picture here. All right, we talking what? What was it? 2004. Era, you know, you got uh, Pa, all right, who, by the way, this is what makes this whole story even more interesting, is the fact that Pa, you know, he's from, 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 uh, he's from this era, like, he knows the internet, not this era, but he knows internet culture, like, we're talking about a dude who knows what trolling is. Like, imagine if El Chapo one day, or, 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 or Pablo Escobar, you know, somebody of that caliber used to be trolling online, you know what I'm saying, and posted memes and whatnot. You know, like, he's an internet, internet person. I don't want to dive too much into his personal life, but two things I'll, I'll tell you about him is that, for one, he was an internet dude, and he was, you know... Part of the internet culture, if you want to call it that. And I think he made Bitcoin. E4M and and and, and the casino softwares he had. Alright. So Bitcoin's earliest Bitcoin's earliest application, I mean, as being applied, uh, uh it was gambling. It was perfect for gambling websites. It was kind of like uh another form of gambling chips. It worked perfectly for that. But up until that point, again, he was not uh, a criminal, per se. But he was getting successful. He was getting that money. I don't know if it got to his head, like Drake, who grew up a good boy, and now hanging out with, uh, what's, the, what's his name, Tom Bob. Baka not nice hill mer- well, I don't know what he said. But you know, money does that to people. It'll have somebody not from that life all of a sudden start, you know, it turn hard now because they got money. Anyway. So Paul moves more into criminality. However, in how he handled his profits, had the funds, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why, but he still wanted to clean money. Or, or let's just say store money. Right? That's what Izzy wrote, uh, uh, laundered. But I, I just say stole because his money wasn't 
too illegal at that point. So he chose uh, purchasing gold bars in Hong Kong with cash, cash money, all right? And he hid them gold bars in houses, stash houses across the city. Now, what young thugs say? First you get the money, then you get the power. You remember that song? So he got the money. Now he needed to get him some power or rather muscle, all right, to protect his, 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 his uh, gains here or, and interests in the Philippines. Now, Pa, he didn't need, uh, like you see what happened with Kanye West. That's a common sentiment amongst uh, 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 Bitcoiners. Another reason I think it's him. It could be him, bro. But check this out. He didn't need to see Kanye get his bank account closed and lose um, whatever he lost. He knew early. You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube. Make sure to click the like button. Smash the subscribe button and leave a comment for the algorithm.